Uh, hi, I'm Deng Yuyang, and I'm a graduate student from Dr. Jeremy Levy's research group in University of Pittsburgh. Today, I'm going to talk about <coughs> our efforts on the reconfigurable graphene-based 2D quantum materials. Uh, quantum science and engineering is a, a big topic, and there are always great challenges and open questions to it, such as how can we achieve quantum computation, and we have examples such as uh, Superconducting, superconducting qubits, and how do we do quantum simulation? And we have iron traps, autocode atoms, and so on. And uh, how to do quantum sensing? And uh, what's the quantum maturity? Uh, with these all uh, the great challenges and open questions, we believe that controlling the quantum matter lies at the center of all these grand challenges. Uh, regarding the uh, the systems we're interested in, especially the strongly correlated systems, these are uh, very uh, typical three examples. One is the cuprate superconductor, which has a uh, lattice size of a few angstroms, and its high temperature superconductivity drives the interest uh, for the researchers. <clears throat> the other is the cold atoms, which has the uh, lattice size around one micrometer, uh, in which uh, we are uh, expecting to see Hubble model simulation by the cold at atoms. <clears throat> and more recently, the Morel lattice shows at the magic angle twisted graphene, uh, there is flat band uh, being generated, showing the uh, spatially localized electrons. And this lattice size is around 10 nanometers. Its superconductivity is tightly related to this flat band uh, situation and drives the interest. <clears throat> Uh, not only the uh, the uh, twisted bilayer graphene. Uh, recently, uh, there's interest on the Kagami lattice, which is uh, uh, initial initiated from a uh, Japanese bamboo woven structure, which shows a hexagonal structure with uh, the triangle structure at the corners, and. It shows this Kagome lattice also has a flat band in which the electrons specially localized at, uh, in the hexagonal ring. And there is a recent publication on uh, archive from Dr. Uh, David Packer showing that an applied potential with symmetries of a Kagome potential induces a high degree of band flattening at graphene for a range of realistic potential amplitudes and periods, which is exciting because we don't need to twist the graphene <clears throat> we don't need the bilayer graphene, but with a single layer graphene, a monolayer graphene with a applied potential as Kagome lattice, we're able to, uh, it's possible to see the flat band. And furthermore, probably we can see the superconductivity. And I would like to introduce a perfect method to generate this perfect potential uh, in, our, in my later on talks, which is called the ultra low voltage electron beam lithography. <clears throat> The system we're working on is the lanthanum aluminate strontium tiny heterostructure, which has rich phenomena that have been discovered uh, with a uh, three-unit cell and more LO uh, growing on the STO substrate. There will be high-mobility 2D electron gas formed at the interface. It has the metal insulated transition, superconductivity, magnetism, and tune loss mean orbit coupling. All these uh, properties makes this a great platform for quantum electronics, and we're really interested in it. Especially with the metal insulator transition, <clears throat> our group has developed the uh, the on-demand nanoelectronics, oxide nanoelectronics, using the connective FM lithography, which can uh, modulate the surface molecule and pattern the protons to act as a local uh, top gate to create nanostructures at the LOSU interface. <clears throat> Using the method, uh, we have a bunch of uh, interesting results, such as we create single electron transistor at the LOSU interface, and we observe electron pairing without superconductivity. We have the graphene complex oxide heterostructures, and also there is observation on tunable electron-electron interactions. Uh, we have the ballistic electron waveguide, and uh, discover the 1D nature of superconductivity. And also recently we have the Pascal liquid series, uh, which shows a, a interesting 
uh, electron uh, band structure uh, bunching uh, in this uh, as this Pascal uh, series. Uh, with all these uh, interesting uh, results coming from the connective FM lithography, we're also facing its challenges and limitations. And I summarize here as the writing efficiency issues. So the writing speed is in the range of 10 nanometer per second to 1 micrometer per second. At the same time, the device itself is naturally decays in the air on a time scale of hours. So these two uh, conditions constrain the complexity of the device we could make. At the same time, the device size is uh, uh, like literally limited by the AFM scanning size, which the largest one we have is 19 by 19 uh, micrometer square. <clears throat> so to overcome these kind of limitations, uh, we introduced the ultra-low voltage EB lithography, which will introduce the speed boost and size explosion to the nanostructure patterning at the LOS2 interface. The writing speed can be up to 10 mm per second, which is 10,000 times the writing speed of kinetic FM lithography, and the writing scale can be as large as a wafer. We use the ultra-low voltage acceleration voltage, which is around 100 volt range, to avoid damage to the oxide structures, and it's under the vacuum condition, the uh, SEM chamber, so the device can preserve uh, inside the vacuum for a prolonged time. Uh, <clears throat> Moreover, I'll show you we're able to write through a thin layer on top of LUSU, uh, including the graphene and boronitrate encapsulated graphene, and which provides us uh, possibilities to uh, generate such potential to tune the graphene on top of LUSU as I introduced at the beginning. So this is to show the writability of the ULV EBL. Uh, basically, we have two metal electrodes contacting with the 2D electron gas uh, at the LLS2 interface and uh, I used a uh, a E-beam to uh, expose a wire connecting these two electrodes. With this writing, uh, we can see a clear connectance jump from this writing process and uh, after I transferred it into the AFM and used a negatively biased AFM tip to erase it, uh, we can totally erase it to uh, cut it to zero conductance, which shows the writing itself is a reconfigurable process. We can repeat this process, uh, write and erase the pattern at the LLS2 interface. <clears throat> so then, here we transferred a CVD grown graphene on top of LLS2 and etched it into this uh, rectangle shape. And after that, I expose a tunnel wire connecting the electrodes uh, at both sides of the of this graphene piece. And we can see a clear connectance jump from this connecting uh, writing process, which is showing that uh, the ULV EBL can pattern LLS2 interface to be conducting uh, with a graphene on top. So it writes through the graphene. And we can see this is a AFM profile to see, we can see the LUSU terraces underneath the graphene. So this is to show the transfer quality. <clears throat> uh, moreover, not only a single layer graphene, we also tried the graphene with boronitride uh, on top to give a uh, better graphene uh, quality. And this is not the CVD graphene, but the exfoliated graphene. And with graphene exfoliated and put into the stack with boronitride, we're also able to uh, write through it to create nanostructures underneath. <clears throat> with the ability to do this, we have uh, basically two kind of devices ongoing. And the first is, looks like this stack, we have a boronitride encaps encapsulated monolayer graphene on top of LLS2 and we put a graphite top gate. Uh, which allow us to tune the monolayer graphing also. And uh, as I described uh, in the theory prediction, the Kagome lattice potential will help uh, tune the graphing band structure. And right now we're uh, patterning this kind of Kagome lattice underneath the monolayer graphing. And another set of uh, experiment we're doing right now is put the interdigital uh, transducer uh, at the uh, potential uh, underneath the uh, underneath the device, and the stack here is the bilayer graphene encapsulated by the boron nitride with graphite top gate on LOSTO. 
and uh, the ideal case is with uh, different potential, differential potential um, to different sides of the IDT, we can have uh, topologically protected channels, edge channels in the bilayer graphene, and we're hoping to see interesting results from it. So here is my summary. I showed that uh, we're able to use U of EBL to create LLS to normal structures, and we can thread through the graphene stack, uh, not only a single layer graphene, but multi layer Van der Waals structures uh, is also doable. So right now we're on the way to have uh, interesting devices and potentials patterned underneath the graphene, and I hope to share you more uh, of our results, ongoing results next time. Uh, thank you so much.